Greetings, Randy Labonte here, looking to share a little bit of my own thinking and writing about leadership and change in the uh, presence of technology. So what I would like to do is go through a few of the, the frameworks that have worked for me and provide you with uh, some opportunity to see if those frameworks will work for you when you're looking at implementing some new technology in your classroom or in your school or in your organizational setting. So our past experiences, we have some sort of a structure around theory and if you've been involved with the course that I was, uh, that was available to you online, then you've got an opportunity to look at theory. So we talked about theory as being something that helps us to envision a future, a future space or place it starts to open things up and make them trans the, the visible to us, but most importantly, they keep us honest. We all start with some sort of a theoretical frame of reference, largely as probably developed when we were students, but as teachers, we have that inherent. It's important that we make it visible, that we make it obvious, and we're aware of what are the theories behind our own thinking in our practices. So there's been a lot of discussion around different theories and could be an evolutionary uh, from the Skinnerian behaviorism through to cognitivism but also in terms of constructivist approach as well as connectivist approaches. So if you're like me you're probably erring on the side of being a connected constructivist with uh, a base in cognitivism. The problem when we're teaching online is that behaviors and human interactions play out very differently. So not too sure that behaviorism is really something that I use as a reference point when I'm looking at online. So we got a theory, but working online is a completely different environment. Certainly one that I was never used to as a student, never had the opportunity. Um, when I get, went in and started to do my post-secondary work, yes, I did teach, uh, became a student of teachers who were teaching online. but. How do I understand that? So there's a couple of models that um, bandied about that work reasonably well. So there's TPAC, which is technological, pedagogical content knowledge. Essentially, it says if we're gonna work online or through digital technologies, we have to know how to use them. So we have to make the technology invisible is what I say. Um, we gotta know our content curriculum as well, but then we have to also have a really clear instructional approach or pedagogical uh, knowledge. So it's the intersection of how all those three come together that are important. And then when you start thinking about your practice, this is a model which works quite well in terms of the community of inquiry, well researched. And it really says that when you're working in a digital learning space, that you have a cognitive presence, content knowledge, you have a uh, social presence, which is the more in terms of how you engage and collaborate and work with people, but then you'll have a teaching presence, which is what you do as a directive part of orchestrating or facilitating that learning to occur. So you've got the model. Great. Okay. Well, how do I sort of design stuff for learning in that space? Well, uh, there's a couple of places that work really well for me, which is under universal design for learning, obviously, but understanding by design, which is looking at big picture endpoints and then working backwards to construct interactions and activities that will address and lead students to the outcomes you're looking for. And then the processes, uh, universal design, design for learning within that will help you to uh, structure things so that there's multiple means of expression. Okay. Got theory, got a model too, got the design stuff. Wow, now I just have to figure out what's the technology I'm gonna be using. So am I gonna be talking about laptops? Am I gonna be talking about tablets? Am I gonna be talking about a virtual learning management system? Am I gonna be talking about building a course? So what is it that really the technology pieces? And remember back to TPAC, I have to master those technologies. So be careful in terms of what you select. Okay, so I got all those in places, now what? Now I go build my course. Now I go create uh, my learning digital learning space. Now this is when the rubber hits the road. So when the rubber hits the road though, what's important and behind that is our ability to connect and communicate, which now through the technolo technologies available at our fingertips is really allows for a lot of creativity and innovation. And it can actually happen, making that happen though, in our traditional learning spaces is the challenge for us. That takes leadership, 
that takes the ability to lead and understand change. And it also takes our ability to understand how it challenges our traditional notions about teaching and learning that we may or may not make explicit and others may not be in the same place in terms of your own thinking. Uh, so it's something to recognize that. Um, the other part of that is in this world that we live in, users can now engage in learning when they choose. It just is not when they're in front of a teacher. Content and information is available at a fingertip. Uh, so the role that you play in terms of supporting the move towards that kind of a learning approach and design is really, really important. And for a lot of programs, they can make it or break it on the leadership that is used and played out to support the implementation of something new. Now, I like to rely on transformational leadership developed by Leithwood. Uh, Ken Leithwood, as well as Michael Fullen in the earlier days, um, and actually a lot of the work was based in Canada. So transformational leadership to me provides a pretty good frame of reference to understand the role of leadership. Again, a theoretical model, but again, it's important that we look uh, in terms of how theory can frame our thinking. So in this connected world, if we don't think about these things, and we run down the road to implement some sort of a new technology, e-learning approach, or something of that nature, we run the risk of losing precious resources down a rabbit hole. So, the other thing is technology is tyrannical. As much as technology may be what we're looking for, what's the question? If we do not frame the technology that we're thinking about implementing or the e-learning approach within a context that's pedagogical, uh, we, we are really probably not doing ourselves a very good service. The reason why is the tyranny of technology is that as soon as you understand the use of one bit of technology, it's off to another. So something to be uh, certainly aware of. So when we start talking about technology, institutions and organizations can embrace a certain technology, but how to support the transformation of how, when, and where instruction is improved, learning is improved within that uh, use of technology and digital environment is, is, is the real key. How do you actually connect the students to the learning itself within those contexts? So we live in complex organizational environments and they demand change, significant change. And the literature around change in complex organizational environments is pretty clear that leadership is such a central part of that. Um, implementing also requires us to resolve significant pedagogical and technological issues within that, sometimes social issues, um, and they all need to be balanced against the ultimate goal and purpose of learning. So that's a change management that requires significant leadership and leadership skills. So I think it's important at any level that we're at that we really don't uh, give short shrift to leadership and thinking about what leadership is and how we need to apply it in our own work. So what I want to go into now is a little bit of work about issues, challenges, in and of for in innovation, read adoption of e-learning, read adoption of technology, read whatever you want that innovation is, and really talk a lot about leadership and change within that context. Because the context that we're trying to put this in is often still in this paradigm of learning. So we're still in a, a transmission model of content dump and content regurgitation, and that's what we constitute as a formal education in many cases. We need to flip that upside down. And in many cases, it is being flipped upside down for a lot of people. We need to be thinking about how we're all connected and how learning occurs in this chaos, in this networked environment of content diffusing through and being created and co-created by learners instead of thinking about learning as just being a teacher directing. Again, the transmission model or content dump as I like to call it. So this is our environment. Classrooms, bells, buildings, probably not where learning is only contained and I would argue that is migrating out of to a certain extent as well. Not to leave permanently or forever, but to migrate and grow out of the environment. 
So where people are connected, kids are connected, and things are connected into learning commons, learning um, virtual environments, and it really changes the role of the teacher from that as the purveyor of teaching as opposed to the facilitator of learning. So the paradigm shift, and we all talk, you know, the, the guide on the side versus the sage on the stage. But so now how are you gonna go about all of this? Well, to me, the change is about leadership. And there's a chapter that I've written and there's the URL for it and I'll have it available for you afterwards as well if you want to read it in, in writing with some of the, the literature. It's a little dated. But it really talk about leadership and getting away from that notion of management. So I quite like this phrase by Bennis. It's an older one. Those who master the context as opposed to those who surrender to it. That's the difference. That's how leadership is made. So you master the context and you really have to understand the context in order to be clear about that. And Michael Fullen, who writes a lot about leadership, uh, and he's at the uh, uh, OISE here in Canada, um, he talks a lot about change from the middle or leadership from the middle. And he talks about the fact that, about the pedagogical horse. So it's really about the pedagogy and you have to master that. And you have to change how that happens. It's just not about the uh, implementation of a digital asset. His argument is, is that if you appeal to that sort of uh, instructional, pedagogical side and sh demonstrate to teachers how a digital asset can be supporting that growth of their pedagogy, off they go. You, you, the implementation challenges and the leadership issues uh, can diminish entirely. It's about capturing imagination. So leadership is really your ability to influence or persuade someone else about a purpose or agreed purposes that you have. It's about looking at the relationships within a community and our ability to cope with the complexities of that, but also to help support and facilitate the organization to move forward. It's the art of getting things done with others, and at its core, really, leaders provide direction and exercise influence to mobilize while working with others to achieve that shared uh, intention. So obviously the first piece is, is it a shared intention or is it just your idea? So I think there's some things about that that we need. Um, so a lot of your leadership is about your trait, it's the situation that you're in, and it's the contingent pieces that are emerging that you're trying to work. It's kind of like an art. If there isn't a precise formula for leadership. So Leithwood talks about seven dimensions of transformational, transformational leadership. It's really a dynamic and its purpose is to kind of build motivation and followers and to create a better place for the organization or the change that you're looking for. So as mentioned, it's really about the, your ability to influence and persuade and agree on an agreed purpose. So starting with a shared vision is absolutely the most important part. Being specific in terms of what you're trying to achieve. Um, capturing imagination of individuals within there, helping them, supporting them, taking away roadblocks and obstacles, and yourself modeling what it is where you expect things to be in that future that you're moving to, and not settling for good enough, just good enough. It's about really challenging yourself and going back and picking it up and challenging yourself again, and then challenge others. And it's all done really largely within a positive culture about trying to create a better good that involves people in where you're going. So those dimensions I think are really important to me about how change can be affected at an individual classroom level, at a school level, at a school district level, or at a large organizational level. Transformational leadership is not rocket science in that sense, but I think it is a practical reminder just like the uh, community of inquiry is a reminder about the fact that we need to have sort of a teaching as well as a content or a cognitive uh, piece as well as the social pieces there. They really help to ground us and re when we get caught up in the moment of things. So this is where I look at this as being a really important part of it, is transformational leadership. So the action is about change and it's about change for a shared agreed purpose and good. Technology is part of that and the speed and complexity of change is is amplified by the speed and 
uh, and complexity and change with technology in and of itself. So the technology is not the end, it's the means. And Michael Fullan says it well, um, technology is powerful, but only in the service of a powerful conception. So I think it's important that we really keep that focus. It's like being focused on the pedagogy, as he would argue, as well. So the quality of leadership, the Consortium for School Networking um, studied this, and the quality of leadership they found to be a prime factor and indicate whether technology funding was spent wisely or wasted. And they argue that without the meaningful leadership backed by supportive communities of practice, disparities in budgets increased, so they really tracked leadership to the actual use um, and expenditure of resources on technology. And, and Fullen goes further to Leithwitz by saying you have to have a moral purpose, you have to understand the change process, you have to focus on the relationships, the creation of knowledge and new meaning going forward, and how to make that coherent with folks. Uh, so that whatever is you develop and where you go is that you have a sustainable future that is built within a social environment in the context of learning. So it's at all levels that you must be there. So it's not just managing change, it's about leading change. It's about making change part of your uh, whole sort of purpose and fiber of your practice. So Fullen will tell us a lot about leadership and we'll talk about change. But what are the processes that I can use? What are, give me the, the sort of the cold notes of what can I do to actually support myself in moving forward with that change? I like the concerns-based adoption model. And this can apply to using, uh, implementing technology, uh, new educational policies, any kind of change process, uh, certainly within the education context for sure. Adoption, success really depends on the adopters. So I might have all the passion and ideas in the world about what it is that I want to bring into play, whether that be something new in terms of how we're going, to, I'm going to teach my kids, students in my classroom, or where I'm going to change things in terms of my organization or school. But success is measured by the adopters. CBAM, as it's called, the Concerns Based Adoption Model, really says that change is not a one-time event. I just don't implement change once. It's an ongoing process that occurs as part of a new idea or another idea that comes forward. The focus is really on the process and the individuals that are crucial to make that change come forward. Because the change is very, very personal for all of us. And so we have to understand and situate our expectations, our leadership for change within that context. And it's how we intervene in a supportive, in a challenging, in an informative way with those individuals that the context will be laid for the change in and of itself. So CBAM has a, a lot of really important pieces for us to remind us again uh, about where to go. CBAM came out of the uh, Center for uh, Research and Development Center for Teacher Education at the University of Texas. And it's been widely used actually uh, at different levels. And there's one um, a website, this is the settle, S-E-D-L.org, uh, has really sort of adopted the CBAM piece. And it, I think it's really helpful for us to look at CBAM within the, and they break it into three different levels uh, within the, uh, the approach for the concerns-based adoption. So they talk a lot about stages of concern, which is the reaction to the innovation. So you might have a good vision and a picture for change, in terms of the innovation configuration, uh, clearly shared, acceptable, you know, flexible approach um, so that it can be managed through properly. Um, and you could have, uh, you know, an understanding of the feelings and the concerns about being expected uh, for that change for those levels. But you also have to have sort of stages or levels of use. So marking the, the process of which adoption will occur. So what, what are your measures and what are the goals within each of those measures as you move forward for the innovation? So you just can't jump off the cliff and get there. You have to put people into stages and manage their, their concerns, the issues within that, uh, while keeping true to the picture or where it is you're moving, or reshaping that vision a little bit based on your experiences. 
So they really talk about those three levels. And I would encourage you to take a look at that page uh, because it's a very helpful tool, I think, that will bring you forward in terms of your practice. So in conclusion, leadership is really all about change and how you manage that process, how you support people, challenge people, certainly make sure that everyone has signed up for the same sort of vision that you're moving forward on that. And again, whether the context be in a classroom, an online classroom, or in a school, or in an organization, the processes are pretty much the same. So I would really urge you to take a look at transformational leadership and concerns-based adoption as tools that will help you in your quest to use uh, technology, to implement a new e-learning approach, to launch a course, to make a change in such a way that you can be successful by looking at the details of the process itself. So I want to thank you for the opportunity for me to muse about my thoughts on leadership technology and how the change process works in that context. If you want to get in touch with me directly, you can see the contact information there. Thanks for your time.